Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. <laughs> It's time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. Well, last Friday night, the Board of Education held its annual banquet. Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, was one of those eligible to participate in the festivities. And this is no small honor. The school board banquet is extremely exclusive. In fact, it's only open to members of the board, principals, teachers, students, parents, and anybody else who can cough up $3 for a ticket. (laughs) As if that weren't difficult enough to manage, the affair was strictly formal. Last Thursday night, therefore, I made a careful inspection of my wardrobe and was forced to the conclusion that my evening clothes just wouldn't do. The tops were in pretty good shape, but the cuffs were all frayed. (laughs) Friday morning before classes, the subject was brought up again in the office of our beloved principal, Osgood Conklin. Uh, Well, Miss Brooks, do you know why I summoned you to school so early today? The janitor is sick and there's some coal to be shoveled. (laughs) No. No. The reason I've called you in is to tell you that Mr. Stone, the head of the board, has asked me to make a speech at the banquet tonight. Well, congratulations, Mr. Conklin. You want me to help you frame something appropriate? Thank you just the same, but you've helped frame me before. (laughs) No, no, the speech is all written, and it emphasizes, in a subtle way, of course, the athletic as well as scholastic superiority of Madison to the other high schools in this area. Yes, sir, but where do I fit into your plans? You have in your English class one of our star baseball players. With practice about to commence any day now, Stretch Snodgrass must be kept eligible. That's a pretty large order, Mr. Conklin. Stretch isn't a very good student. Good teachers make good students, Miss Brooks. Now then, You gave a test last week on Thursday, to be exact. I remember it because my daughter Harriet received a mark of 94%. Uh, What did Snodgrass achieve? Well, he didn't get 94%, Mr. Conklin. Oh, what mark did he get? (laughs) Twelve. Twelve? Isn't that a new record for the course? Actually, it isn't. Stretch's mark was topped on Monday, or rather bottomed. Miss Enright has a girl in her class who received a minus two. (laughs) Minus two? How is that possible? Besides failing to answer a single question, she spelled her name incorrectly. (laughs) What? Who is this girl? She's a new pupil, Mr. Conklin, transferred here last week from Clay City High. Her name is Susie Prentice. Prentice? P-R-E-N-T-I-S-S. Or, as she spells it, (laughs) P-R-E-N-T-I-S-S-S. Her father changed jobs and they had to move. A transfer from Clay City, huh? This is the work of their principal, my arch enemy, Jason Brill. If the Prentices and their backward daughter had to leave Clay City, I'll bet he personally secured a house for them in our district. May I remind you, Mr. Conklin, that Susie is not our immediate problem. Oh, yes, you're right, Miss Brooks. It's Snodgrass. Something's been bothering that boy lately. He seems upset, confused. There's something on his mind. It can't be very large or it would slip off. (laughs) You've got to find out just what's wrong with him. We can't even hope for any improvement in his grades until he's straightened out emotionally. But, Mr. Conklin, I'm an English teacher, not a psychiatrist. And even if I were, I'm sure that the most careful analysis would only reveal that as a boy, Stretch hated his batting average. (laughs) (laughs) Miss Brooks, are you trying to inform me that this assignment isn't... uh, as the student body might put it, right up your alley? Well, yes. <laughs> I see. Then perhaps I should let Miss Enright handle this. She could get the information we need from Stretch's other teachers. Let's see. He takes biology from Mr. Boynton. Miss Enright could start out by having a nice long chat with Mr. Boynton. Why don't you let me handle this, Mr. Conklin? <laughs> it's right up my alley. <laughs> Come in. Good morning, Mr. Boynton. I just wanted to talk to you for a moment before class, but if I'm disturbing anything... Oh, come in, Miss Brooks, come in. You're not disturbing me at all. Don't sound so definite. (laughs) 
<laughs> what I wanted to see you about, Mr. Boynton, was... Oh, I'll bet I can guess. The banquet tonight. Well, I won't keep you in suspense. I'm going. Good for you. <laughs> oh, I've been looking forward to this affair for some time now. Haven't been out formal since New Year's Eve. I got the old cedar bag down last night and found my tux in pretty good shape. Oh, by the way, Miss Brooks, do you have your outfit all set for tonight? That depends. Does your cedar bag have a plunging neckline? <laughs> I don't understand. Let's skip it, Mr. Boynton. I'm quite sure I can't attend the banquet tonight, but we can discuss that later. What I'd like right now is some information about Stretch Snodgrass. Mr. Conklin's quite concerned about his schoolwork recently. Tell me, uh, how's Stretch doing in your biology class? Well, frankly, Miss Brooks, he's a pretty poor student. Well, money isn't everything. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, there's only one pupil who's giving him any competition for last place in the course. She's a new girl named Susie Prentice. Do you know her? If she spells it with three S's, I do. <laughs> oh, she, she's unbelievable. On her last test paper, she classified all animals into three groups. Bivalves, quadrangles, and velocipedes. <laughs> uh, isn't that amazing? It certainly is. How did she spell all those words? Well, she didn't spell them. She drew pictures of them. <laughs> well, don't discourage her. We may have another Grandma Moses on our hands. But fortunately, Susie isn't my immediate problem. It's Stretch. Mr. Conklin seems to think that something's bothering the boy enough to affect his studies. Well, so do I, Miss Brooks, and I, I think I know what it is. That kid's in love. In love? Who's the lucky frog? <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. I'm positive it's love. How would you know? I mean... <laughs> how can you be so sure? <laughs> it's simple. You can tell by just looking at a person. You can, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> of course. When, when you're really and truly in love with someone, it shows all over your face. It does, Mr. Boynton. Why, surely. The symptoms are unmistakable. They are, Mr. Boynton. Usually, the victims act dazed and lethargic with a vacant, glassy-eyed, almost stupid stare. <laughs> oh, you've seen them, haven't you, Miss Brooks? Miss Brooks. Duh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, I must have been thinking of something else. I'd better go find Stretch now and have a little chat with him. Oh, very well, Miss Brooks. But I hope you'll reconsider about the banquet tonight. If you do change your mind, let me know during lunch period. I doubt if I'll change my mind by lunch period, Mr. Boynton, unless the cafeteria serves a 60-cent evening gown on their blue plate. <laughs> Toodles! Hi, Miss Brooks. Well, Stretch Snodgrass. This is the quickest manhunt I've ever been on. Are you heading for the lab? Yes, ma'am. I had to come back on account of my absent mind. Where did you leave it? <laughs> well, I've been terrible lately. Can't keep my mind on nothing hardly. I just realized I made a very bad mistake while I was helping Mr. Boynton clean out the cages before. What did you do? I stuffed some old newspapers back in the cage and threw four guinea pigs in a wastebasket. <laughs> Don't let that upset you. The change will be nice for them. <laughs> Before you go back into the lab, Stretch, there's something I'd like to ask you. It's rather a personal question, but I only want to help you. You may fire when ready, Grizzly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Stretch, what have you got on your... What's troubling you lately? <laughs> well, I'd rather not say, Miss Brooks. But Stretch, maybe I can help. Well, how could you help? You're a girl, too. Thanks again. <laughs> What's wrong with my being a girl? Well, that's what my whole trouble is on account of. Oh, then it must be true. You're in love, Stretch. Oh, I sure am, boy. My folks say it's just puppy love, but I know different. I never in my whole life loved no puppy like I love this girl. <laughs> but, Stretch, how does this girl feel about you? Oh, I don't know, Miss Brooks. I haven't asked her yet. I was going to, though, at the banquet tonight. I even got an advance on my allowance and bought two tickets. But then I found out it was formal and I ain't got no tuxedo. Stretch, I have no tuxedo. I didn't expect you to have a tuxedo. <laughs> but I sure wish I could borrow one someplace. Of course, there's, there's no guarantee she'll go with me even if I do get a tux. If it'll help your peace of mind, Danny Stretch, I'll not only try to borrow a tuxedo for you, I'll attempt to talk her into going with you. Gee, that'd be wonderful of you, Miss Brooks. 
She's awful popular and real smart, too, boy. She's been helping me a lot with my studies lately. Stretch, what is this girl's name? Susie Prentice. <laughs> Susie Prentice? Yeah. P-R-E-N-T-I-S-S-S. <laughs> well, she's a new student here. Have you met her yet, Miss Brooks? No, Stretch. But from what I've been able to gather, she's extremely clever. C-L-E-V-V-V-R. <laughs> Starring Eve Arden will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's as directed helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results. <laughs> When lunch period arrived, I hastened to the school cafeteria looking for the cause of Stretch's amorous heartburn. I didn't have any luck at first, but finally I sat down at an empty table, and there she was. <laughs> mind if I join you? No, ma'am, I don't mind. You're a new pupil here at Madison, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. And you must be a teacher. You're too old to be a student. <laughs> well, we're off to a nice start. <laughs> You're Susie Prentice, aren't you? That's right. But how did you know? Easy. You spell it with three S's. But I haven't introduced myself. I'm Miss Brooks, Susie. I teach English here. Miss Brooks. I should have knowed. Knowed what? Known what? <laughs> well, that we'd get along real good. Golly, I knew I'd like you before we ever met. Just when I heard your name. Brooks. How did you know? Oh, I just love names with a lot of S's in them. <laughs> <laughs> then you should get along famously with Stretch Snodgrass. I had a little talk with him this morning, and he seems to think he's in love with you. Oh, it isn't really love, Miss Brooks. I don't think. I guess you'd call it inflatuation. <laughs> <laughs> inflatuation? Yes, ma'am. And why a cute, good-looking, super athletic fellow like Stretch should get infatuated with me is something I just can't flathom. <laughs> well, don't try to flathom it, Susie. <laughs> You're a girl, and he's a boy, and he's fond of you, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> These kids were really meant for each other. <laughs> well, Stretch is good fun, all right, but... There's one thing about him that I just seem to sense is wrong, Miss Brooks. What's that, Susie? I think he's kind of ignorant. <laughs> ignorant? Why, Susie, how can you say such a thing? Oh, please, Miss Brooks, now don't get me wrong. I'm not inferring that he's stupid. Oh, I know you wouldn't infer anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he tries awful hard to study. I know because I've been doing my homework with him for a couple of nights now, and I've been helping him all I can. My toughest job so far is trying to learn him some grammar. <laughs> I'm trying to teach him some glamour myself. <laughs> Good. Maybe between us we can both learn him something. <laughs> well, if Stretch is going to be eligible for anything besides summer school, we'd better pull him out of his present depression. And that, Susie, is up to you. Well, what can I do, Miss Brooks? Go with him tonight to the board banquet. Well, I haven't got any evening clothes, and it's strictly formal. I'll try and dig something up for you. But where? Well, the same place I find Stretch a tuxedo. <laughs> Will you go if I can borrow an outfit for you somewhere? Well, sure, Miss Brooks. I guess so. I guess I'd like that real good. Fine. You know, you kids won't make a bad-looking couple. 
You're downright pulpitudinous, Susie. (laughs) You couldn't say it, and neither could I. (laughs) That is, modesty wouldn't permit you to. Well, I've got to get down to my locker and change for my gym class, Miss Brooks. So, if you'll excuse me... Certainly, Susie. I won't be alone for long. I see Walter Denton bearing down on us. Hello, Walter. Greetings, O fairest flower of the faculty. (laughs) If I may join you and this other young lady, I'll... Hey, she's pretty. Tuck your eyeballs back into their sockets. (laughs) This is Susie Prentice, a very dear friend of a very dear friend of yours. Likewise, I'm sure. (laughs) Well, I guess I'll be running along now. All right, Susie, I'll hold Walter's leash while you make your getaway. (laughs) All right, Miss Brooks. And you won't forget about that evening dress now, will you? No, Susie, I'll do the best I can. See you later. Goodbye, Miss Brooks. Toodle, Walter. Toodle, Susie. (laughs) Say, she's a knockout, Miss Brooks. Very dynamic new material. Down, boy. (laughs) She happens to be Stretch's girl. Besides, what about Harriet Conklin? Oh, Harriet's still my one and only. I was just giving Susie my man of the world routine number seven. Besides, I wouldn't do anything to hurt old Stretch. He's my pal. That's as good an opening as I've had all day. How about lending your pal a tuxedo for the banquet tonight? But I've only got one, Miss Brooks, and I'm wearing that myself. You see, I've been working after school as a delivery boy at Sherry's department store just so I could buy the tickets. And Mr. Con- Conklin must have a rich uncle that died or something the way he's been buying clothes. Gosh, he got formals for Mrs. Conklin and Harriet and evening clothes for himself. Say, maybe Mr. Conklin has an extra tux now that he's bought a new one. No, he hasn't, Miss Brooks. He gave his old tux away. And this time he bought tails. (laughs) Can't you just picture it? Mr. Conklin with tails. I usually picture him with only one tail. (laughs) Gosh, I've just got to get those kids some evening clothes. Wait a minute, Miss Brooks. I got an idea. Why don't you call your landlady, Mrs. Davis? Mrs. Davis? She hasn't worn evening clothes since Harding's inauguration. He was about the last Republican to get in, wasn't he? (laughs) I forget. I didn't mean for you to borrow anything from Mrs. Davis, but when I picked you up yesterday, she told me your sister Angela and her brother Victor attended a formal wedding last week. Maybe they'd lend their outfits for tonight. They might at that. It's worth a try. Let's see. Now, where's the nearest place from which I could call Mrs. Davis? Why don't you try the telephone? (laughs) Walter, I don't know what I'd do without you. Well, Miss Brooks, what did Mrs. Davis say? She said she was going over to see her brother and sister today and that she'd ask them to lend Stretch and Susie their evening clothes. Oh, that's swell, Miss Brooks. Will she bring them back to your place? She said she would, Walter. Now, what I want you to do is to tell the kids to meet me in my class right after school. Then we can go home and see what luck Mrs. Davis had. Here you are, Daddy. I've typed a nice, clean copy of your speech for tonight. Thank you, Harriet. Now, run along, dear. I've got a lot on my mind. Something wrong, Daddy? I've just talked to your mother on the phone, and she has informed me that our evening clothes have not been delivered as yet. Well, there's still time. School isn't out for two hours yet. I am quite familiar with the schedule of this institution, my dear. (laughs) But your darling mother is going to spend the balance of the day in the beauty parlor. Well, you can't blame her for that. No, she can use it, heaven knows. (laughs) Uh, That is, I want your mother to be at her best this evening. But she called the department store and told them to deliver our things to Mrs. Davis's place. Now, I'll have to scurry over there like a jackrabbit before dinner time and pick them up. Come on in, Susie. Stretch. We're home, Mrs. Davis. Mrs. Davis! Oh, I guess she's out shopping. Let's go into the living room, kids. Oh, look here, Miss Brooks. Here's two big boxes. These must be the clothes Mrs. Davis got for us. Oh, that's right. 
right. Open one of them, Stretch, and I'll get the other one. Thank you, Susie. Here, let me help, kids. Well, what do you know? An evening gown. Wait, two evening gowns, Miss Brooks. Look, one's a little bigger than the other. Oh, now, wasn't that sweet of Angela? She didn't know what size you'd need, so she lent us two of them. Golly, Miss Brooks, this one looks like it would fit you fine. Why don't you borrow it and come along this evening? What? Me put on a borrowed evening gown just so I can attend a banquet and dance every dance with Mr. Boynton and then go out on the terrace in the moonlight? Come on into my room and we'll try these things on. <laughs> <laughs> what I got, boy? This is even better than a tux. This is a whole set of tails. Oh, well, you can change in Mrs. Davis's room, Stretch, right down the hall. And, Susie, you go into my room over there. Where are you going, Miss Brooks? I'm going to call Mr. Boynton and tell him that if he doesn't pick me up here in 20 minutes, I'll call for him at his house. <laughs> I'll be right there. <laughs> Come in, Mr. Boynton. Oh, thanks, Miss Brooks. Well, I, I was quite surprised when you told me you could attend the banquet tonight, but now that I... Uh, say, let me look at you. All right. <laughs> Hi, that, that's some outfit you've got on it. It's stunning. Oh, you just like polka dots. <laughs> Boynton. Oh, that's lovely, too, Susie. And you look very handsome in those evening clothes, Stretch. Where did you get them? The same place Miss Brooks got hers. A liar charged the account at the store. You see, the kids were a little short. I ain't short. <laughs> no, but you're going to be late if you don't hurry. You two run along to the banquet, and I'll see you after a while. But it's only 4 o'clock, Miss Brooks. The banquet don't start until 7. Stretch can take you for a nice drive around the parking lot. Come on, I'll open the door. Oh, I get you. You want to be alone with Mr. Boynton for a while. Rex, you shouldn't say things like that. Now, come on, give me your arm. Gee, thank you, Susie. <laughs> All right, it's good to see you looking so happy, Stretch. Happy? Boy, I'm absolutely delirious. <laughs> Did, Susie. Yeah, Miss Brooks. Thanks for everything you've done, Dead. <laughs> well, that's that. Oh, it was wonderful of you to arrange clothes for those kids so they could attend the banquet, Miss Brooks. Oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it shows that yours is an extremely warm personality. Come a little closer, Mr. Boynton. It's not that warm. <laughs> Miss Brooks... There's something about that strapless evening gown that you have on. Uh, well, would you answer one question for me? If it's the question I have in mind, no, that's a trade secret. <laughs> I, I just wanted to know, aren't your shoulders cold? Well, come to think of it, Mr. Boynton, they are cold. In fact, they're freezing. I thought so. And I'm going to do something about that right now. You are, Mr. Boynton? Yes, I'm going to get your coat to slip on. <laughs> oh, fine. Well, he could have said hot water bottle. <laughs> it's me, Connie. I've been to the store. Hello, Mrs. Davis. My, but you look beautiful. Thanks. I'm glad you were able to get yourself such a lovely gown at the last minute. Get myself? But this is one of the gowns your sister Angela lent us. Angela? She wasn't at home all day. Neither was my brother Victor. But those boxes in the living room, where did they come from? They were left for Mr. Conklin. He'll be picking them up any minute. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, would you answer it, please, Connie? You're closer to the door. You mean closer to the gate. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, how are you, sir? Glad to see you. What brings you all this way out to this little old neck of the woods? Hmm? <laughs> if I may have my packages and a minimum of small talk, I'll leave this neck of the woods like a shot. <laughs> oh, packages, did you say? Hmm. Well, there's something very funny I have to tell you about that. Oh, it's <laughs> very funny indeed. <laughs> 
what? There are no packages. <laughs> oh, that's a scream. <laughs> Now then, if you'll kindly... There are no packages, but my wife distinctly told me she had the store deliver them... Let me put my glasses on. Now, Miss Brooks, step a little closer, please. Well... Something wrong, Mr. Conquer? I know that there are many faculty members who would like to be in my shoes, Miss Brooks. But what are you doing in my wife's gown? Please, Mr. Conklin, remember your high blood pressure. And where's my brand new full dress suit? Take it easy, sir. Take it easy? I bought that suit to go to the banquet tonight. I know you bought it to go to the banquet, Mr. Conklin. That's why you can relax. Why? Because that's just where it is. <laughs> As our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap... Better than a liquid, Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. And now once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, I sat Mr. Conklin down in the living room and gave him a complete explanation and a cold compress. Then I went into my room, took off his wife's evening gown, and slipped on my little everyday number, the skirt with the clever reversible pleats caused by years of folding over a wire hanger. <laughs> as soon as I gave him the gown, he slammed out after Stretch and Susie to get back the rest of the family clothes. Then Mr. Boynton came into the living room. I know you must be terribly disappointed about that evening gown, Miss Brooks, but don't you worry. You're not going to miss a thing. I'm not? No, ma'am. I'm going to take a pencil and copy down Mr. Conklin's speech word for word and read it to you tomorrow. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, how would you like that? Mr. Boynton. Yes? How would you like a punch right in your nose? <laughs> to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. For a beauty bath that brings you glamour from head to toe, get bath size palm olive soap. Yes, ladies, for a velvet smooth beauty lather that caresses your skin leaves your whole body glowing with a warm blush of fragrant loveliness, enjoy a beauty bath with bath-size palm olive. It's perfect for your tub or shower. Just the gentlest massage over your body creates a glorious lather that leaves your skin delightful. Yes, for the most luxurious bath you've ever had, get big bath-size palm olive soap. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. 